Okay, welcome everybody. It's Janelle Cooper again. I just wanted to show you this really fun short project today before I head out of town. So my last couple of projects have been a little more like larger projects, so I thought this might be um, a good one to do just really quick before I head out of town to go see my daughter. I'm gonna go spend a month in Tennessee with her. So having said that, this actually, the reason why it's these colors is because it matches my daughter's kitchen. So this is gonna be a gift for her. So uh, originally I wanted to show you guys how to do a corner to corner scrappy blanket, but in the version of a corner to corner scrappy kitchen cloth because it's basically the same thing, right? Just one is much smaller than the other one. So these are using just whatever random cotton yarn I had in my closet. A lot of it is sugar and cream. A lot of it is, you know, like whatever, no, sugar and cream, whatever it is. The peaches and cream from Walmart, sugar and cream from Lily's, um, just everything, right? If I had some small and some big, so it doesn't really matter if they're all the same size or whatever. So then I went to Dollar Tree looking for seeds because we're getting close to springtime and I came across this yarn. So Dollar Tree, I don't know if you guys know and maybe it's not everywhere, but Dollar Tree is now carrying yarn and it looks really small and everybody assumes that if it comes from Dollar Tree, it's probably less than par, right? But this is made by Premier Yarn Company, which is the same company that makes Premier Home and this is one of my favorite cotton yarns because it's not so thick. So this is Sugar and Cream by Lily. You can get it just about anywhere. It is, um, it's kind of the standard for cotton yarn out there and it's pretty cheap. So if you use a coupon, you can probably get it for like maybe $2. If you order it online, you're gonna pay like seven or eight. I don't know why that is, but it's true. So you get like 200 yards in here and, um, but you can just tell by looking at it that it's just thicker, which I mean, if you like that, that's great. It just makes for kind of bulkier work like this, right? But I got this Dollar Tree yarn made by Premier and it is a much sort of more delicate cotton yarn that you could use. You could probably use this yarn to make like a cute little sweater or a vest or something, or this would be a little on the heavy side, right? So what I'm here to do today is I'm gonna show you what how this works up what you can use, basically what you can do with Dollar Tree yarn, right? So like this is $3 worth of yarn. I am not gonna use that much. I've already made this one and I really only used like half. So you could probably do probably two kitchen cloths with one set of like one of each color on here. Um, and the other thing I want to show you too is this is a dollar's worth of yarn. It's 104 yards. This is probably six or seven dollars worth of yarn. I probably got it at Hobby Lobby or not Hobby Lobby, um, Craft Warehouse down the street from me because apparently they don't sell a lot of cotton that isn't sugar and cream at like Joann's. So, um, and this is uh, 131 yards. So this is only 30 some odd yards, not even 30 yards longer than this. And it's like $5 more. So um, so this is actually a pretty darn good deal and it's pretty darn good yarn. So I would definitely highly recommend Dollar Tree yarn for your project. So let's go ahead and get started on this. It's super easy and fun. It's gonna be a super fast video really. Um, what you're gonna need is a tapestry needle for sewing in your ends. This hook, I usually just use whatever they tell you to use, unless I'm trying to make it like flowier. And um, this one asks for an eye hook, so that's what I have is an eye, which is a 5.5 millimeter. I have different colors. You don't have to stick with my color scheme. This just happened to work out. When I was at Dollar Tree, I was like, oh my gosh, those are the colors that we just painted my, da my daughter's kitchen when I was there in November. So um, I grabbed them and um, I got more than I needed, like way more than I needed. So I may make her some other stuff too. But um, anyway, so you can grab any random colors that they have and you can literally make yourself a cute little rainbow scrappy one like this if you want to, or you can just use the yarn out of your closet if you want to, to make this. We're gonna use the ex exact same principles that I used on this one to do this one. The only difference is that I did a um, different border, like an extra border on this, just to make it look slightly fancier than on this one. So if you haven't seen my kitchen cloth videos before, I know I have like four or five of them, I have a lot. Um, I use them 
all the time. Like I don't even use regular towels anymore. These are the cloths that I use in my kitchen. I use them as hot pads. I use them to dry stuff. I use them to wipe my fingers on. They're, they usually, I have them in different themes for different holidays and different seasons. So we just switch them out every, you know, I mean, I think I probably have two or three for each season so that we can switch them out and wash them and whatever. They're just so great. They just, um, we don't even use regular towels anymore. These are our favorite. So um, that being said, let's make some for my daughter. This is the green. Okay, so this is corner to corner crochet. We are basically gonna start, this is my favorite crochet stitch in corner to corner, which is the half double crochet stitch. And what it does is it makes for a little tiny box right there, which if you're doing graphs, I actually did this on my Halloween one. If you're doing graphs, these are great because it kind of makes the graphs less blocky. It makes them more like fluid looking. So um, that's why I love it. But also see, there are still holes in here, right? Like you're not gonna get away from holes in corner to corner crochet, just like you're not gonna get away from holes in most crochet. It's just the way the name Nature of what we do right but for some reason it's just flowy and nice like you don't look at that and see the holes you look at that and see the fabric we're gonna start with this corner right here and I'll show you how to get started on that so first you're gonna chain four so usually in corner to corner crochet we chain. well it depends on how you do it right but um, when you're first taught corner to corner crochet, usually most of the videos you find are gonna tell you to chain six. Um, then you realize that if you chain five, you end up with a smaller gappiness right here in the hole, right? I'm gonna tell you to chain four, and we're not gonna do three stitches, we're only gonna do two. So it's gonna be a much smaller box that you're making or block. So go ahead and chain four. Okay, then what you're gonna do is you're going to do a half double crochet in the second chain from the knot. And I, the reason I count it this way is you can do it either way, whatever makes you happier. But when you start doing the boxes, you'll see soon. For me, it's just easier to count from the box that you've joined it at, which is where we're gonna, what we're gonna do in the future. So second chain from the knot, you're gonna do a half double crochet in there. Okay, that's the first one. Then we're gonna do the other one on the first chain from the knot. There you go, you've got your first box. Okay, so when you're working corner to corner, you're working like this, and you're going to, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it, and we're gonna build it up this way and come back this way in this direction. So this one has one, two, three rows. That's what we're gonna do on here. So when you're over here, you're going to turn it, but for some reason I always chain first. So we're gonna go ahead and chain four, again, just like you did at the beginning, because we're building. And then you're gonna do the same thing, half double crochet, two chains from the box, from the square. And then do it again, half double crochet to the first chain from the square. Okay, so now what are we doing? It looks kind of twisty and weird. This is when we're going to technically turn it and you're going to take this and you're gonna attach it to that chain two spot right there that is at the side of every single box, okay? So find that chain two spot, put your hook in there and then you're just gonna pull up a loop and you're going to join it just like that. Now we're going to do, so we're still in the same row. See how it's turned now. Oops. So now it looks like that. We're gonna come back down this way. So you're still in the same row. This time we're not gonna chain four, we're only gonna chain two. So you only chain four when you're growing, when you're building, um, and chain two when you're continuing. Okay, so chain two, we're already connected to this chain two space right here. So we're just gonna go ahead and do two half double crochets in that same space. Just like that, okay? So that looks a little gappy and weird. Don't worry, it'll work itself out as we go. If you're following a graph, we're not following a graph today, so you don't have to worry about that. We're basically just gonna go back and forth and we're gonna make diagonal stripes with different colored yarn. If you are doing a scrappy one like this, I did a different color for each row. 
you can do a different color every two rows or every three rows, or you could do three rows and then one row, whatever your little heart desires, right? And whatever, how much yarn you have. If you only have a tiny little piece of yarn and you wanna use it, you can totally use it on this one little square right here, right? So we're on, we finished the second row, and now we are gonna head right back up the way we came. So we went this way, this way, and now we're gonna go this way. So this is where we did the final half double crochet. Now we're going to build again. We're gonna do four. And then you're going to do a half double crochet in the second chain from the square. And then another half, um, half double crochet in the next chain, the one right next to the square. Okay, so this is how you know that you have to turn it. It's because when you go to attach this, there's no chain two spaces right here. That's the edge. So in order for you to attach it to the chain two space, you have to turn it and go right there. See that space, that gap right there? That's what you're heading for. Okay, so I'm gonna do this third row really fast, and then I'm gonna show you how to change colors. Half double, but before you finish it, we're gonna change colors. So you're just gonna pull the new color in. Don't, don't finish the, the half double crochet until you have the new color, then pull that in, okay? Then you're going to go ahead and do the same thing you did before, just chain four, and just keep on going. See how these get kind of loose and kind of odd and stuff? It gives you, when you weave these ends in, it gives you the opportunity to kind of like shore everything up and make it perfect so that it's a nice, perfect rectangle. So yes, it'll be a lot of ends to weave in. I mean, depending, I guess, on how many times you change yarn, but um, it'll be worth it. It'll look good. So go ahead and continue on doing your half double crochet, just like you were using the same color, but this time we've on a new color and then follow whatever pattern you want. So I'm gonna turn this, attach it. This is a super, super easy way to do corner to corner crochet. You don't have to follow a graph. You don't have to count anything. The only thing I need to count is about how many squares I did across on this first one so I know when to start decreasing. Um, so that they match, right? So for me, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12, yeah, 12. And then I started decreasing. So go ahead and continue doing whatever design you want with whatever colors you want until you get to about as wide as you want it to be. For me, it's gonna be about 12 squares. And then I'm gonna show you how to start decreasing on this side. We're gonna to continue to increase over here and we're gonna decrease over here until we get to as long as we want it to be. Look at how fast that works up. And it's just so much, okay, before I do this last row, before we start, um, this is the 11th row, we're about to start the 12th row, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to um, start decreasing. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make this side go up straight and this side will continue to go this way. So you'll increase on one side, decrease on the other side, um, back and forth until it's as long as you want it to be. But let me just show you some quick differences here in how this works. So I've always wanted to make a scrappy blanket. Um, I've made other scrappy blankets that were done with just multiple strands of yarn and then you just switch out the yarn kind of like you do with a scrappy um, basket. You have like three or four strands, different colors, and then when one runs out, you just replace it with another one and it kind of just variegates the color all the way through the blanket and it's pretty cool looking. Um, I made one for my son and one for my brother and they both love them, right? Um, so that's great. It makes a really nice heavy blanket, but I've always wanted to make this kind. So you can follow these exact same principles in making a scrappy blanket and look at how fast that works up. Like that was what, like 10 minutes? So Obviously a blanket is on a much bigger scale, but if it works up that fast and it's so fun to change colors and it's so, it's just, it's just gonna be a blast. So when I get back, hopefully I will grab all my scrap yarn of which there is a lot and I will maybe make a scrap blanket that looks a little bit like this, just much bigger. So, um, but I wanted to show you some differences here. So be I chose to do the half double crochet block on these because this yarn is so light and delicate. This is done with more like this thick, thick, you know, traditional sugar and cream yarns. Some of them, there might be some lighter yarn in here, but for the most part, it's thicker. And it looked better with these big blocks to me. 
Um, so these are actually done the traditional, uh, I do five and two um, chaining, which means that when you start it off, you chain five, and then you do, um, in the stitches, you do uh, three um, double crochets across, and then you chain two, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, and then when you're when you are growing, it's instead of six, it's five. So that's what these are, and I can show you the link to my original video. I believe um, I'll put that up in the corner up here, but um, the original video to my kitchen cloth corner to corner basics, and you can see me do that block on there. So that's why the difference, that's why they look different from each other. If I was going to do a scrappy blanket, I would probably do the bigger blocks because um, honestly, I like that chunkier look. But if you want your stripes to be, like look at how nice and uniform those stripes look. You don't really see any blockiness in there. So it just depends on the look that you're going for, right? And they're both done exactly the same way, exactly. Just one of them is a smaller block, and the other one's a bigger block, and that's the only difference. Okay, so imagine that this is the bottom of your cloth, right? Like this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start going up this side right here. So all you do to do that is you're going to chain one, like you normally would if you're gonna go up one. You're gonna um, slip stitch into the first stitch and then you're gonna slip stitch into that chain two space right there and then you're going you basically turned it and now you're going up the side right so now you're gonna chain two because we're not growing anymore we're decreasing and you're just gonna fill in this space between the chain two and this block right here so it's gonna be two half double crochets And then the chain two space should be right there. That's how you know you've got it turned in the right direction. So you're just going to slip stitch into that and then continue on. Okay, so I show it to you from this direction you can see that now I have a corner over here and a corner over here so every time you go up to this tall one you're going to grow so you're, you're going to add on and that's when you do the chain four but then every time you come down to here to this bottom one you're going to decrease <laughs> increase decrease for some reason i couldn't think of the word increase so then you're going to do the thing where you slip stitch into the side and then you're going to work your way back this way um, when we get to so continue doing that with whatever colors and whatever patterns you want until you get it as long as you want it to be for me and that's on the tall side not on the short side so on the tall side you're going to make this as long as you want it then i'm going to show you how to decrease on both sides which is super easy. But for me, I am gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. I actually made that longer than usual. Usually I double it. Um, so like, usually, like if it's 12, it would be 24, but on that one I did 28 and I want them to match. So I am going to continue until it is 28 long. I think the reason I did that was because of just the way that it fell, the colors fell on there. So it worked out well. So um, you can do it as long as you want it or as short as you want it. If you want it to just be a square, you can totally make it a square right now. You can actually start decreasing on that side. If that's the case, then just um, skip to where I'm gonna show you how to decrease and then I'll show you how to just whoosh, like that. Okay guys, so I'm not there yet, <laughs> obviously, but um, that always happens, right? I always come across something that I wanna show you. So we finished the side. I just wanted to show you how to change color when you are on the side that you're decreasing, right? Cause you, you know, normally I'm like, don't finish the last stitch and then you just add that, you know, the last row in. Okay, so let me, let me explain myself. So usually when you're doing the final square before you change colors, I always say, oh, don't finish. You just wanna like, slip the new, new stitch in there, right? But if you do that, it'll make it super awkward because then you'll be in the new color and then the new color will go up the side and it'll look weird, right? So we are going to go ahead and 
join right here like we normally would if you wow why am I wrapped around that so many times okay so join right here like you normally would and then we are going to decrease on this side so we're gonna go we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch into that and then when we go to slip stitch into this part which is the chain two space right there that's when you bring in your new color and you guys probably already figured that out without me because you're super smart but just in case because if this is a new stitch for you then that probably feels awkward so we're gonna do we're gonna add that new color right there and then we're just gonna continue on with our chain two and then half double crochet and half double crochet and continue on we'll tighten that up a little bit we'll attach it to there and so that's how that looks just like that on the side so that's the only thing otherwise I think you can just continue on until you get to the length that you want Okay guys, so we've reached the point where we're going to start decreasing both sides at the same time to come to the point at the end of it. So this is, um, here, let me get to the right angle here. So I'm coming in on this one. We just finished and this one ends right there. Like that's the top of the edge there. So instead of going, we're going to connect just like we did before. And then we're just going to do the exact same thing we did on the other ones. And then same thing as we did before, just chain one, turn it, and you're gonna go back up this way. And we're not changing the yarn at this point, we're gonna change it on the next row. So we're just gonna continue. Then you're just gonna continue doing exactly what you were doing. You're just gonna be, now you're decreasing on both sides instead of on just one side and increasing on one side. There is no staying the same when it comes to corner to corner. You're either increasing or you're decreasing. <laughs> okay, so just continue until you get to the point. And I'll show you how to end it and then we'll, I'll show you how to do the edging or the border around the outside. Okay guys, so I am almost done. I just got down to the last square, which I'm sure you already know how to do this, but um, it's so satisfying. I figure it probably needs to be on here, right? So last square, we, this is, we ended over here and we are coming up the side because we're decreasing. And then we're just gonna slip stitch into here, do our two chains, do our two half double crochets. and then slip stitch into the chain two space there. And then you can just knot it and you're done. You can weave in your ends. So <clears throat> one thing I can tell you about the pattern for me, I don't think this is super important because your pattern is probably different than mine, but um, when I got to the end here, there were three um, rows on the first one, but the last one I ended up doing four rows because I just thought it would look better than trying to put that on the end. I just thought it looked cleaner. So that's why that it's a little bit bigger on the end over there than it is on the other side. Um, but now I'm going to show you really quickly how I weave in my ends. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you know that I always use the back and forth method because that is what keeps the ends from coming out. Okay, so I usually I use the back and forth method because it keeps the yarn from coming out. This is a, I mean, honestly, this is the only way that I use for um, weaving my ends in now. But one of the things that I, I just kind of like skipped over showing you, this was really loose right here, and I just kind of pulled it all together just by kind of doing that. And that's what I did with all of them. So if there's anything that was like a little bit loose, which I'm sure there were because we didn't like knot them or anything, um, then you just pull them a little bit tight, not too tight, but just enough to kind of make it look perfect. And then you just kind of find some loops to go under, maybe a couple sets of them. Oops. Jump over the last stitch and come back exactly the way you came. Jumping over the stitch keeps that loop from coming right back out. And then out that way. And that's really all you gotta do to weave those ends in. And because it goes back and forth, it doesn't matter if you pull on it or tug on it, it doesn't make the yarn pop, pop out. That was like, my favorite blanket that I ever made that took me years to make, um, I did not do that. And so all of that, the little pieces of yarn are starting to pop out with wear. 
and um, I have to take the time. One of these days, I'm going to sit down and I'm just going to reweave all my ends. I just did it on my son's um, scrap blanket that I was telling you about. I went in and his they were all like frayed and sticking out and so I just sat on his bedroom floor and wove all the ends in and he was like what are you doing I'm like well we want the blanket to stay together so this is what we're doing okay make sure your corners are still pointy you didn't accidentally pull them in and then you can trim that off okay so now we're gonna do the edging on it and the edging is actually super simple and I'm decided to bust out the black because she has some black um, highlights in her kitchen so it kind of looks like her windows actually which I like so this is the the full-size stuff that I bought in the store in the craft store so this was the expensive version of this and I wasn't sure if one would feel differently but they feel exactly the same so um, definitely this is the better deal definitely but okay so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna grab really anywhere I don't usually do it on the corners because the corners are I don't know like trying to join things on the corners always seems like it makes things really obvious right there so I always kind of start somewhere down the line um, yeah so what we're gonna do I'm gonna take you down one side actually I'm gonna take you down a skinny side because that way we can skip forward so find out where one of your squares are right so these look like little baskets basket weaving things so there's a square right there there's a square going this direction well actually it goes that direction this one goes that direction this one goes that direction that one goes that direction so find where the edge of one of your squares is and go in between the two squares so be between that one and that one pull up some yarn and then slip stitch to join and then all we're going to do if you want to make it more secure, you can just go ahead and do a single crochet right there. Right? I think I did. Yeah, I did. Okay. So then you're just going to chain. When I originally did this, I would chain three because we were doing those these little blocks here. Um, and that's fine. And then I, I'm like, okay, well, these are only, we only did chain two on the side. So it makes sense to just chain two. But I kind of like just chaining one, to be honest, that way. I don't know it just kind of keeps it all sort of tight um, and centered so just kind of chain one in between and then we're going to put two stitches in that chain one space when we come back around so so there we go chain one go into the hole after the square there kind of just kind of keeps it nice and tight and not too not too um, loopy you can make them loose chain ones too if that makes you feel more comfortable but chain one and you're just going, if you can see these squares, you're just going on the bottom of the square and then the side of the square. So there's the side, side of the square and the top of this one going this way. You're just gonna go in between those two. Just so that they're kind of uniformly spread out. Okay, it seems like every time I do a corner, I do it differently. <laughs> so who knows, I was, that's why I was looking at this. I'm like, how did I do it? Um, I think what I did was, I mean, you could just do chain all the way around the corner, but that's going to give you a huge gap right there. So I didn't really want a chain right there. So I went to the bottom of this, of the square and just grabbed a piece and I did like a single, mm, don't forget to do your chain one. And then I just found the top, the top of that corner and I did one single crochet, chain one for the corner and do another single crochet in the same space like that so it makes it a corner on there and then just continue on all the way around okay guys so i've come all the way around see how it's like just sort of nicely evenly spaced it doesn't bunch it it doesn't ruffle it it's just kind of and it's nice because it's just one chain and but you can make that chain as loose as you want however it feels right when you're doing it so um you won't have that weird spacing so now what i'm going to do is I'm going to join it right here with a slip stitch to the first single crochet that was there. And then I'm going to, am I going to chain up one? I don't think I am. Just, you know, newsflash everybody, I am always just winging it, <laughs> just so you know. I think I should chain up one. Yeah, I think I should. Okay, so now in each one of these gaps, we're going to put, and it's going to be easy to, there's like a, there's a piece there that's kind of in the way. 
you could split it. I wouldn't. See how it like on that side, look how there's like a V there. You want that V to stay together. So you definitely, when you do your two single crochets, you wanna do them in that space, but definitely don't go into that. Otherwise it'll end up looking, they'll be spread out weird. So you wanna kind of shove that little piece of yarn over and then do your single crochet right there. Okay, so you have two single crochets that that are basically, they stand for the two rows that you did right here, right? You did two um, half double crochets. Half double crochets are really just a row and a half up, not like a full two rows, so things could ruffle. So if that does start to happen, if it starts to get kind of, um, feel like you've got too much yarn going on there, I doubt it, because we're kind of jumping over things. Um, if that happens, then just uh, do one stitch in there instead of two every once in a while, and that'll keep it from getting too big on the sides. So I'm just gonna go all the way around. Um, when I meet you at the end of this, I'll show you what to do on the last two rounds of this, and then, um, and then we'll be done, yay! And I think I'm gonna show you another little surprise too, because I have all this leftover yarn, so, and I bought it specifically for her, so I think I'll make something for her. So we'll see. Okay, sorry, I should have continued so I can show you the corner. Um, honestly, you guys, I totally make up the corners as I go. So again, over here, there's two corners. Look out for those two um, Vs in the back so you make sure that you don't like split them um, so that they look funny. And I'm just gonna do, just like I did before, I'm gonna do one single crochet and then a chain for the corner and then one single crochet back in the same hole. And then just continue on my life and we're not doing any chains in between we're just doing the single crochets um, two of them in all the spaces unless it gets too loose and then you can just do one once in a while if it kind of tightens things back up again okay guys I am back it's actually been a couple of days because I got sidetracked and doing other stuff so now what we're gonna do next oh first I want to show you look what I made I made these cute little wiggly stitch um, I guess you would call them hot pad holders, but they're also really good for like holding your drinks on them and stuff. Like they're, um, this is, since they're cotton, they're perfect for um, coasters, but aren't they so cute? They're gonna, and they kind of match everything and it'll go cute in her kitchen. So I'm excited about that. Um, and if you wanna learn how to do this, this exact thing right here, I have a video on it. It's called uh, Learn the Wiggly Stitch. And if you, you can either do a search for it or I'll put a link up here in the right hand corner, but if you're watching this on your TV, you probably don't have access to that. So you can just do a search for um, Janelle Wiggly Stitch and it'll probably come up, but um, it's in like rainbow colors and stuff, but you can use any colors you want, clearly. Um, and I just think they're so fun and they're nice and thick. So if you put like a hot pot on it or something, it will um, protect it from the surface. So, and they're just cute. She loves flowers, so. I think that'll be just a cute decor for her kitchen. So we're not gonna just go straight into the crab stitch. So usually what I do on these is I'll just do like a row of plain old single crochet around the outside. Um, but I like the way the crab stitch looks. It just has a nice rolled. I use the crab stitch to finish things probably more than any other stitch. I just love it so much. So it just has a nice like rolled finish. Um, it looks just a little classier. I don't know, I just love it. So, so that's why this one is so much smaller than the other one because they're actually almost the same size. I think this is actually a little bit shorter too. Um, but uh, I added the crab stitch on there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one row of regular single crochet all the way around. And, and in the corners, you're gonna wanna just do your corners just like we did before. Just do one here, little chain one in between, and then one there, right? Um, and then we're gonna go around and do a crab stitch on top of that. So if you know my videos, you probably already know how to do a crab stitch by now, because like I said, I do them all the time, but I'm gonna show it just in case this is a brand new video for you too. You can pull up a slip stitch if you want to, if that's easier for you. Um, and then just do a chain one and then go ahead and do your single crochets all the way around. I sometimes like to start with a standing single just because that way when I connect them to each other, it just looks more continuous. And a standing single crochet is basically you just wrap it once, go into wherever you wanna be, pull up a loop, and then wrap it and go through two. So it's like a standing single crochet so you don't have to start off with a uh, slip stitch to get started and it doesn't have that awkward beginning to it but you want to hold on to this until you get through your second stitch 
so that it doesn't like come unraveled. And then once that happens, you're good to go. So, and then just go ahead and do a single crochet all the way around. If you are, if you find that for, it shouldn't because you're doing single crochets on top of single crochets with the same size yarn, so it shouldn't be a problem. But if for some reason it starts to buckle, that just means that you have too many stitches going on and um, you can just do like two, two single crochets to one. So it's uh, two together. I'll show you how to do that really quickly. So you just pull up a loop, uh, go to the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then just yarn over and go through both. And basically what that did was it took two stitches down to one and that um, that will take you can do that kind of periodically and it will take away that ruffling but you probably shouldn't have that problem unless you're working with two different sizes of yarn or something because it's basically just single crochets on top of single crochets okay guys last couple of stitches so interesting because um let me get rid of those that's how much yarn I have left so I don't know if you remember but I started off with two full skeins of each of these colors one skein of this color right and i've made this one and this one and both of these and i still have almost a full skein of each color so um so you could do you can do a lot with just one skein of dollar tree yarn i think it's definitely worth the money definitely i mean it's not really dollar tree anymore it's like dollar 25 tree but still it's still worth it um, so we're going to go ahead and finish this up and then I'm going to get you, show you what the crab stitch looks like. Um, and then I was going to show you, if you want to hang out for a minute, I'll show you these finished, but you kind of have already seen them finished. But also the thing that made me, um, disappear for a couple of days is I got a little bit obsessed with, um, what we're going to work on next. We're going to try this new fun thing that I am so obsessed with. I just can't stop doing it. So, um, I'll show you that here at the end of the video, just a second. So we're gonna go ahead and do the last couple stitches. And then I'm just gonna join it right here at the beginning of the first, that standing single crochet. And then I'm not even gonna chain up one. I'm just gonna turn around and go backwards. So um, you're just gonna, it's just like doing a regular single crochet, it's just backwards. So this is not just called the crab stitch, it's called the reverse single crochet as well. And you'll see that what it does is it creates this crisscross right here, and then you're just gonna yarn over, <laughs> if you can get a hold of your yarn, yarn over and go through both, right? So then go to the next one, you kind of like loop it back, go into that um, backwards, <laughs> it feels weird, but it, it works. And then it does this little crisscross and then you yarn over and go through two, and it creates this cute little roll. I don't think I did anything fancy in these corners. I think I just followed the stitches. You never know with me, because I am winging it like all the time, but I think I just, I didn't do anything crazy there. Okay, so just continue doing your little rolled crab stitch all the way around, and then I will meet you when they meet each other back here. And I'll show you how to weave in the end so that you, so that's a nice continuous end to it, no knots or anything. And I'll show you what my new obsession is. Check it out. So that is planned pooling. And if I'm being honest, I had no interest in it at all until my friend uh, TJ, who if you're on my Facebook group, you guys know her as Tamara Johnson. We've known each other for many, many years. And she came over last weekend and wanted to, she's been wanting to learn plan pooling forever. And I'm like, meh, I, it looks difficult. I wanna keep things simple for the people that I'm teaching. Um, but she bought a plan pooling <laughs> yarn and came over and did it. And we kind of figured it out together and I couldn't get I couldn't get it to work with my yarn, and she got it to work with her yarn. So of course my um, that instinct kicked in. That was like you can't tell me what I can't do. So then I decided to learn how to do it, and I have been absolutely obsessed. So I did this one. Like, this was just some crappy yarn that I've had in my closet forever. But look at how beautiful that is. Look at how pretty. And then I started playing with it to see if I could change the shape at all. Um, and uh, the answer is yes, you can change the shape. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can actually stack it so it's just striped. And then, so I was stacked it so it was striped here. And then I 
wanted to see if I could switch the stripe in the middle, which I did. And so, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot. It's a rabbit hole that you could go down. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, but I've been absolutely obsessed with it. So um, I've been posting them on my Facebook group and people are like, I really want to learn this. And I'm, I did not intend to make a video about it, but so many people are interested in it. I think that I will, um, but it'll be when I get back from my trip. So in April, I will put together a video. We'll probably do something super simple like a, a scarf or something, or maybe just like placemats or something. I don't know. Like if you made a placemat, just kind of edged it. I don't know, we'll figure it out. But, um, but we're gonna go a little bit in depth because the other videos that I've seen, um, and I've, I've watched a lot of them trying to figure this out. And there's, there's a couple of key things that there's this little game you have to play with yourself about tension. Honestly, I think a beginner can do this. I really do. As long as, and I think that if you learn how to adjust your tension and why, um, it will, first of all, it'll make you feel like the, you're in charge of your own destiny in everything you make from now on. Um, you're no longer just an innocent bystander. Um, and second, it's just, um, people just don't talk about it on their videos about how to do that. So I think we'll go into that. We'll go into how to choose your yarn. Um, Cause these are just variegated. This isn't even anything expensive or special. It's not even special pooling yarn. It's just, um, this is just Red Heart Super Saver. There are certain ones that you can do it with and certain ones you can't. So I'll show you how to do that, how to fix it, how to pick, or how to pick those colors and stuff. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe because um, I don't know when that'll come out. It'll be sometime after I get back from my trip that I will jump into it. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do the end of this crab stitch. Hopefully hopefully that was interesting to you. I am a little bit geeked out. You can probably tell I'm, I'm super geeked out. I really wasn't even interested in it at all. And I mean, I was, you know, I was a little bit like, eh, it'd be kind of fun to know how to do it, but I don't know if I wanna teach it, but now I really wanna teach it because I think I can teach something because, um, I've learned some stuff. So I'm gonna go into that last, this is the chain two, or the one that we finished the single crochet and then we didn't chain, we just went backwards. So there's a loop right there. I just wanna kind of finish that off so that it doesn't look weird. And then um, go ahead and do your yarn over and pull through both loops. Do, don't yarn it, you, or don't knot it. Usually we would knot things right here. Don't do that because it'll, it'll make it look wonky. So just kind of tighten it up. Go ahead and pull out a little bit of yarn because we're going to, weave our ends in and it's very similar to what we do usually um i'm going to do the back and forth method i always do back and forth because it's just the safest way to go but instead of like i tend to when i weave my ends in i tend to go this direction and then that way this time we're going to go straight on through like we didn't stop going and that just gives it a nice smooth finish So we're just gonna go like we're continuing on. So that bump just goes right on top of where the other bumps are. And then just go underneath those little bumps. Don't pull it too tight or else you'll have a divot right there from, I can tell you from experience. And then grab a little like yarn that's not part of the actual bump so that it's not super um, visible and then come back the way you came. That is it, my friends. Okay, so we have this cute little washcloth or kitchen cloth for my daughter. So we got, she's got two set, or a set of two. And she also has a couple little flowers too, to go with it. So if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. That helps in all the algorithms and stuff. And um, if you're interested in the next video, go ahead and subscribe so you'll get a notification. Click the bell, I guess, and that'll tell you when the notification comes, when that happens. Um, meanwhile, there are, I think, almost 100 videos now to go back and look at, so lots of other videos. Um, I did, if you're specifically interested in the kitchen cloths, I did those in like, there's a heart one, there's a Halloween one, um, there's all kinds of stuff in there that you can find. I love kitchen cloths, I do them all the time. Um, but also you can use the same technique to make a corner to corner scrappy blanket too. Um, and I think, I even think this would be a good edge on a scrappy blanket as well. So would love to see pictures of everything you guys make. And also if you need my help on anything or anybody else's help on anything, um, be sure to join our Facebook group. It's called Janelle's Quarantine Crochet and it's, 
totally free and open to everybody. And if you go on there, you'll find a group of people who are just fantastic. They're just very supportive, kind, wonderful people who love to help. So um, go ahead and sign up for that if you're interested. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.